it primarily concerns, she's talking about um, the person who got fired before her by Barclay Reed, who's a woman named um, Sarah Schilling. Um, and uh, that's, I'm making it's like a page, just to give you an idea of another piece of it. Sarah. Sarah had a pink cover for her cell phone. She decorated her cubicle with posters of cats hanging from tree limbs. <laughs> At home, the woman had six pet birds, named after each of the seven dwarves except Grumpy. <laughs> of course, there will be clients who find this sort of personality cloying. Where it matters, though, in caregiving situations, Sarah was more patient and comforting than I could ever hope to be. Once, I was called in to help with a difficult case, Alan, who had tumors the length of his spine. As they grew, they were cracking his vertebrae. Suffering like this, I would not wish on an enemy. Managing Alan's pain was challenging for Sarah, which is why Central Office asked me to, to, to assist. I guess that's my strong suit, reducing pain, I mean, which reveals more about me than I might immediately care to admit. No surprise, Alan's decline was driving his family into conflict. They were all loud, big people, the women bosomy and round-faced, the men bearded and grim. They shouted for conversation, let their cell phones ring and ring before answering, left the TV turned up too high. But of course, the hearts of people like this break just like anyone else's. Their father was nearing his final hour as we were titrating morphine to see if we could mute the pain without making him unconscious. Meanwhile, we could hear everyone in the living room bickering at full volume. Someone in the kitchen slammed a drawer and I saw Alan wince. I'm tempted to go out there and slap sense into someone, I muttered. Whatever my skills, I was still plenty capable of running out of patience. Sarah smiled at me, her freckled face drawn in at the cheeks. I know you don't mean that, she said, but I can see how you would feel frustrated. Ah, the forbearance of the hospice worker. Wonderful and annoying. Sarah went to the doorway, hands clasped just like at her desk in the morning, and cooed, Excuse me, excuse me, everyone. It was like a dove flying into a den of bears. I was ready to see the feathers fly. But she spoke so softly, everyone had to hush just to hear. I'd like to invite you all in now. He's ready for visitors. I invite you to honor your father by joining hands around his bed. Perhaps there's a song he likes that you might all gently sing. I could never get away with being so directive. In a crowd like that, I doubt I could even get everyone's attention. But with Sarah, it worked. They rose as one and moved in her direction. Temporarily, at least, she had ushered them from one stage of grief into the next. Not easy. By the time I'd packed my gear, they were sardined into Alan's bedroom, holding hands or draping meaty arms over each other's brawny shoulders and singing, You Are My Sunshine, in surprisingly good voices to a man so riddled with illness 